Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy Evan here. Today I'm going to show you my sketching process for Deadpool, the Merc with the Mouth. Now let's go ahead and get started. So beginning, I like to always start with a kind of egg shape for the head. And notice how I have the jawline here on the side. I'm going to give him a thick neck and put in the center line real quick in the middle so I know, you know, to keep his eyes and nose and mouth uh, to have them originate from that line. Putting his sternomastoid neck muscle, putting his other shoulder on the side, and then real quick I'm going to put in just a kind of block, block-ish shape for his hand, which will be holding his sword over his shoulder. That might be kind of dangerous, but Deadpool, he's a mutant who can heal, so he can't be killed, I guess, really. And now coming back up to the top, I had to go ahead and just start fleshing out the um, eyes and just kind of roughly put in their shape in here. He has kind of like Spider-Man's eyes. The big old, you know, um, you know, block, blotting in shape. But in the middle, he has his smaller white eyes. So you can kind of start him out like you're drawing Spider-Man, but then just be sure to go inside and you want to go ahead and put in the uh, smaller whites of his eyes that kind of gives him his expressions. And that's what makes Deadpool kind of interesting. Similar to Spider-Man, you can use his eyes to really express his emotions. So for him, I'm going to have him with just one eye bigger than the other one. Way bigger. So here, the eye closest to us on the left side will be closest um, will be bigger than the one on the right so now just kind of just going down and fleshing out more of his neck and dropping in his shoulder here just kind of lightly sketching it let me move the camera down a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing here around his chest area and just lightly just go ahead and sketch it in and I like to use the side of my pencil the reason I use the side of my pencil is so I can stay loose and free and I don't um, it prevents me from you know going in with a fine detail so using my own fist here I need some reference to put in his fist so just look at your own you know body when you need reference for how to draw certain parts you know all artists need help from time to time no one knows how to draw everything all the time, you know. But you want to go ahead and just use your body as reference. And so here I look and see how the fingers span out from the knuckles. Put the knuckles back here on the back part of the hand. And then put the, the cushiony butt part of the palms down below. Then get my kneaded eraser. I'm going to go ahead and kind of clean that up some. Sometimes, well not sometimes, but a lot of times my pencil smudges really get in the way and I don't even know what I'm drawing because I have so many lines that are in the way. And so next I want to go ahead and just kind of just put the finger separation in there. And I might put in some, you know, define the, the bottom part of the hand some more. I'm going to put these black gloves on him so they kind of are bulked up around his wrist area you're really just drawing a fist because we're going to be having him holding a sword and he's going to be gripping the sword so it's kind of just like a fist let me clean this up some on the side a little bit more get rid of the lines I don't want and keep the lines that I do want and just more of just defining what I do like and what I prefer so now I'm going to go ahead and start drawing the sword through the hand here as you can see I kind of like drew a light line going through his hand and then here I'm going to have the, what do you call it, the guard of the sword at the top of his hand. And then kind of draw the pole coming out. And you can have, you know, your characters holding any kind of weapons. You can have, draw Thor in this pose holding his, you know, his Mjolnir, his lightning hammer. You can draw Nightwing having a baton. You can draw Daredevil holding his batons. You can really draw a character holding anything. You can draw Robin holding his bow staff, or any character for that matter. Now we're going to draw his um, his strap going across his chest, coming up here. And I'm just going to put in some light rendering lines, and then going back up to his face, I want to start putting indicating where the light source is coming from. So the light will be coming from the right side of the page, so he has 
a shadow being cast on the other side of his face. And kind of look back, take a look at it. I, I kind of like see what I like, what I don't like. I want to make sure I darken in that part around his eye where his black, uh, you know, the eye part of his costume is on his mask. And I want to go ahead and give him a rim light. It kind of shows that there's a light source on the other side of him that's not as strong as the one here on the right side of the page. So just use your the edge of your eraser and just lightly erase out that white rim light on the side. And then I'll go ahead and fill it in and get it better and just kind of define more of the lines that I do like and what I want to keep. Yeah, looks better. And then I can go ahead and keep the shine that goes above and below the uh, black part of his mask around the eyes. You can like, leave that white, you can color it in and then erase it out later or you can just use your white out pen or gel pen. I tend to flip flop between back and forth on how I leave highlights on my drawings. But it's personal preference, it's entirely up to you. So now moving down and putting in his collar on his uh, neck. I'd almost forgotten the collar. And I'm gonna draw a buckle in here. So I'm not quite sure why he has a buckle around his neck, but <laughs> it's Deadpool. So, but yeah, you can go ahead and put it around here. Let me race out his muscle so you shouldn't be able to see that because the, the belt is on top, covering that up. And then I'm going to put a slight reflective light, well, rim light on the other side of that buckle and his neck. So it's not completely in shadow. And just look at your toys and see how light hits them and how it reflects. You have bouncing light off of your figures. And that helps you know where to put the shadows at, you know, in your drawings. Now for his sword coming out of his back, you know, he has two swords. So I'm going to draw the one that's still attached to his, uh, the sheath. And at the back on his back and make it kind of a rectangular um, sar uh, sword guard which means I have to kind of go back and look at the other one too and I have to change that one because currently the one he's holding has a circular or round uh, sheath or guard rather and uh, just look at some sword reference online it doesn't matter and I almost forgot the tip on the back of his mask here He's been drawn both ways, with the tip and without the tip, you know, at the top of his uh, mask. So either way is fine, whichever way you like. Whichever side of the bed you wake up on that morning, you can draw it however you want because he's drawn both ways. And now time to put in some more shadow on his bice, on his uh, deltoid shoulder muscles and then define his pecs a little bit more. And here we go, get his triceps back there and then kind of just shade in some more where the light isn't hitting his body and then we're also going to have his hand in shadow as well and kind of just darken in that whole lower part of the drawing down here and just take your time and just kind of go back and you want to refine your drawings a little bit more erasing the lines you don't want, keeping the lines you do want. And now here I'm using my Copic Multiliner, or you can use any inking tool. I want to kind of define a little bit more of the lines on its face, especially around the eyes. And as I mentioned earlier, we have to make sure the swords match. So I'm turning this sword guard, making it kind of like rectangular, like the one on his back. So they both match up. And it's going to put in the sheath that his sword is in right here and we're about done with this sketch this is just a simple Deadpool sketch uh, I love to see your Deadpool sketch and see what you can do with it and that's about all for now and if you need someone to go over your artwork to make it look better with anatomy posing or foreshortening then click the link below and join the Cartoon Block Academy our Academy members are helping each other become stronger artists every day. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at The Cartoon Block, and I'll see you soon.